Does anyone have a question? You know, many years ago, I used to teach this meditation in a halfway house for basic juvenile delinquents, kids between the age of about 16 and 18. I got into a lot of trouble with the law. And I'll never forget, I was talking to them about they were you know, dying of thirst or starving to death in the middle of a desert. And they smelled a hamburger about a mile away. Uh, nothing could stop them from getting to that food. They would find the adrenaline, the energy to get to that food. And I remember one kid raised his hand, you know, and this kid, he, what he said was just really wonderful. He said, yeah, but if he ate the whole hamburger at once, he would die on the spot. And it's so true about this spiritual practice. You know, we want to eat the whole hamburger at once. We want to be enlightened in two weeks, in a week, in a day, not realizing that it's a step-by-step -step situation of gradual internal growth and transformation that enables a human being to build a system inside that is strong enough to eat the entire hamburger. And I think our work is very much the nature like that. It takes time, it takes patience, but the slow, gradual building of an inner life is like building a pyramid, like they built those pyramids in Egypt, stone by stone. They didn't build from the top down, they built from the bottom up. And those stones, each stone must weigh 500 pounds. Putting it in, cementing it, and and eventually, how they got to the top is, I, I didn't even want to think about. I can't imagine what they went through. But our work is like that. And, you know, too often we think that we want to arrive before we've even begun. You know, we project, you know, the Academy Award before we even got the role in the movie. And it's something that goes on in the heads of people. And it really is something that makes it difficult to attain, you know, that ultimate end of spiritual enlightenment. Accepting a day at a time, accepting a step at a time, you know, understanding, you know, the difficulty of growing and yet also being in touch with that thirst, that hunger inside ourselves that truly wants to be with God. It's like that Japanese expression, that koan that I always use, you know, climb Mount Fuji, oh snail, but slowly, slowly. <laughs> I mean, I think that's just, it really says it, you know, we're all a bunch of snails wanting to get to the top of Mount Fuji in record time. And yet we can only do it slowly, slowly, step at a time and opening at a time and allow that spiritual nourishment to truly guide us. So at some point in the climb, we're no longer starving to death, but we are truly in need of that energy because we know what it does to keep us growing and to keep us connected with God or higher energy in the universe. So as I say all the time, have patience with yourself, which is not an easy thing for people to do. We're trained from the earliest periods of our life, you know, to get there. No matter what we do, we have to get there. And you live in a place like New York City, I mean, people are rushing and God knows where they're all going, you know? But they're constantly rushing to get there. It's like I said a couple of weeks ago about my daughter, I was in a train coming from upstate New York to New York City. And she was a little kid, maybe four years old, five years old. And she kept going on, Daddy, when are we gonna be there? 
we're on the train, you know, when are we going to be there? So I finally got a little tired of it. And I said to her, Ania, we will be there when we get there. And she said, oh, <laughs> I didn't hear it again. <laughs> we'll be there. And this work is the same. We will be there when we get there. But each step on the voyage has to be treasured, is sacred. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? What we really have to enjoy is not so much getting there, but the voyage and the trip and the journey to get there. Because that's life. And we have to learn to enjoy being alive. I hope it's clear what I'm talking about. I think it's a very important factor in finally coming to terms what it means to do inner work and to develop a spiritual life. I mean, frankly, do we ever get there? No, it, God is infinite. God is beyond all human comprehension. Spirit goes infinitely into the universe. And one of the great treasures of life is maybe that we don't get there, but we continue to grow and expand our consciousness and creativity, getting closer and closer to perfection. Does anyone have a question? No questions. Okay. Thank you. God bless you all. Uh, I'm going to announce it again. You're probably sick of hearing it. <laughs> There'll be no class next Sunday. You know, we're having a retreat here. Uh, there'll be plenty of classes next weekend, but I can't do the Zoom class next Sunday, either the one in the afternoon or the one in the evening. It's, you know, there are too many classes going on. But there will be class uh, the following Tuesday, and there will be class this Thursday. So thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. And I really mean that. Your presence just does an enormous amount of good for my inner growth. And in many ways, you all are my teacher. You know, I told you years ago, I gave up being a guru. I mean, life is the guru. My job is to help people get strong enough so they can sit in front of the real guru, which is life, life, ultimate teacher. More to teach us than anything any human being alive can teach. So thank you, and God bless you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Thursday. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Thank you, Stuart.